Hello friends, I'm popping on today to talk about the sweet flavor. <laughs> I get a lot of questions uh, about um, you know, how we can sweeten our food and enjoy sweet flavors while still being conscious of uh, metabolism, metabolic health, and the microbiome, gut health, um, how that can all work together. Uh, and I think this is a really important topic where there's a lot of misconceptions around it. Um, first of all, you know, I don't like to be dogmatic at all, and I think some people get really extreme about uh, sweets or sugars or carbohydrates always being bad, and that's not true, right? People have been eating sweet foods uh, in traditional societies um, as far back as, as we know, right? Even people who um, are living... Uh, in these very traditional ways, uh, even societies that are mostly carnivore, right? Uh, some uh, societies like the Maasai that are that are mostly living on things like beef and, and blood and milk, they will still eat honey when the season is right, you know. So uh, the the primal desire to seek out sweet foods is not inherently a bad thing. It's very very natural. Um, you know, I talk a lot about how when you have a balanced metabolism and a balanced microbiome. Um, the sweet flavor is still going to be appealing, right? It's just not going to feel like something you can't live without. Uh, so uh, it's natural to crave sweets on occasion in, in a moderate way of like, oh, that sweet flavor would be nice, you know, that would be enjoyable. Uh, and to be able to indulge in that, we want to have a microbiome and a metabolism that is healthy enough that we can occasionally indul indulge in sweet foods and it won't have a detrimental effect on our bodies. So. Uh, the goal is not to never eat a sweet food again or to completely cut that desire out. Uh, we just want it to be coming from a, a healthy place. And uh, we see very healthy people in traditional societies uh, indulge in, in naturally sweet foods. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, why we would want to be cautious around a sweet flavor first. Uh, first of all, uh, obviously sugar uh, is a very fast, efficient food. Uh, uh, fuel source, which is a really good thing when you need energy really quickly uh, and you have a metabolism that can handle that, uh, but it can really disrupt blood sugar levels, right? If you are not uh, insulin sensitive enough, uh, it can uh, make it so that your body is not absorbing those sugars well enough on a cellular level and the levels of sugar in your blood go up, right? And this is a really big problem. Uh, because if your blood sugar levels are too high or uh, as a result from that drop too low because your body overcompensates, um, it's going to make a state in your body where you cannot heal or repair or uh, even produce the chemicals and hormones and neurotransmitters that are necessary for you to, to feel good, to really uh, feel like you're thriving in your body, right? So if your blood sugar levels are too high, your cells are not gonna be repairing, you're not gonna be producing hormones, you're not gonna be producing neurotransmitters, the body is in a state of crisis. Right, and, and a lot of people are in this chronically, right? Their blood sugar levels are always too high or always too low or swinging back and forth between that and the body is in this state of, of survival where it's saying, you know, <laughs> we have blood sugar levels that are way off what they should be. You know, we need to focus on getting this regulated. We're gonna put all other bodily functions on hold until we can get this figured out. But then that person is living their whole life in that state, right? And this is why we can get the development of these chronic diseases when your blood sugar is imbalanced. So even natural sugars can disrupt the blood sugar that way if you have an unhealthy metabolism. Uh, and so you do have to be cautious around it. The other thing is that uh, even some natural sugars can disrupt the microbiome in the sense of um, they can feed bacteria that has overgrown. Now, usually that's not going to, uh, like these more natural sources of, of starches and sugar are not going to cause a microbiome imbalance in the first place, right? Usually that's exposure to pesticides or antibiotics or more processed food um, or things like that um, or other toxins in the environment. Um, but even natural sugars and starches can feed that imbalance of bacteria once it's already there, right? Um, so we see a lot of traditional societies eating these natural sugars and, and eating these starches and they have very healthy microbiomes. That's because they had healthy bi microbiomes to begin with, even though they grew up eating these foods. Um, so sometimes when we already have that disruption of the microbiome, we do have to be careful around that until we can get that rebalanced. Um, so those are some 
like cautions and I'm gonna go through um, different sweeteners and the things that can uh, sweeten your food and talk about kind of the pros and cons in each in light of those things. Um, another thing I will put out there is that even in traditional societies that indulge in a lot of uh, naturally sweet foods, often it's kind of cyclical, right? It's happening seasonally, right? Like honey season is not all year round, <laughs> right? It's like, uh, you know, a few weeks or, or months, uh, a certain time of year that they're indulging in honey and they don't have access to it the rest of the year, right? And so some of it is also just chronic exposure to natural sugars that um, just would not have happened evolutionarily, right? Uh, most cultures are not eating fruit all year round, even if they're eating a lot of fruit certain times of year. Um, so yeah, another thing to be aware of, even as we're going through this. So first of all, there is refined sugar, right? And this is the biggest problem, honestly, even if the only thing you cut out of your diet is the refined white sugar or brown sugar, um, uh, anything that's, that's, you know, concentrated form of sugar, that's gonna have a huge benefit for your health. That's the biggest problem. Um, and it's not an ancestral food, right? Uh, refined sugar was invented uh, just a few hundred years ago, right? And it's uh, the cause of a lot of global political and social strife, right? Like this is one of the causes of the transatlantic slave trade, which has left this horrifying legacy. Uh, so it has a really dark history uh, and it has caused a lot of wars. <laughs> it has caused a lot of health problems, right? So it is uh, something that I think if that's the even if that's the only change you make in your uh, consumption of sweets, it's a really big one. It's a really important one, both politically and socially, um, and then for your health as well. And all those things are obviously interconnected. Um, so this is going to be uh, in a lot of processed food products, obviously, um, a lot of conventional desserts, things like that. So um, this would be one that I, I don't really see a lot of pros to. <laughs> uh, a lot of them, you know, there's pros and cons, but this one, I don't see a lot of pros, just mostly cons. Um, then you have the raw sugar, right? So this is uh, like uh, sugar cane that has not been fully processed and refined down, but is more in its raw form. It's gonna be a little easier for the body to uh, cope with uh, because it is not as heavily processed. Um, so this is gonna be things like turbinado sugar or like coconut sugar, things like that. And a lot of these like paleo friendly, you know, natural products have these in them, right? A lot of these kind of alternative products that are being marketed as healthy alternatives will have these ingredients. Um, it's not going to be as disruptive to the blood sugar as a ref very refined product. Um, I'm still not a fan though, unless you are really at a state where you are in uh, remission from your symptoms and it's just an occasional indulgence. It's not something I would recommend. It still could be very disruptive to the blood sugar unless you have a very healthy metabolism and uh, it's definitely going to still feed uh, overgrowth of gut bacteria unless your, your gut is really balanced. Um, so definitely better than refined sugar, but still not something I would indulge in frequently. Molasses, people ask me about, that's a byproduct of the uh, the process that refines sugar. So, I mean, I honestly, I don't know enough about it to have a really strong opinion about it, but considering that it's a byproduct of a more like industrial refining product, um, I'm skeptical of it. Um, so I'll just put that out there and you can do what you, you will with that. Uh, another one that is often used as a healthy alternative is agave syrup. This is actually not a traditional food, even though I think just the word agave, you know, that's a traditional plant that is used in, in traditional foods, but um, the, the syrup, you know, it's, it's a, a pretty intensive refining product uh, process that needs to happen to get that, that syrup product out of it. Um, and it is very disruptive to the blood sugar and it is uh, also um, going to be fuel for overgrown bacteria. So it's actually not an alternative sugar I would recommend. Um, I would actually recommend maple syrup over that, just pure maple syrup. Um, now this is also going to be a little intense for uh, the blood sugar if you're not very, very insulin sensitive. 
Um, so, uh, and it will also feed overgrowth of bacteria. So again, maple syrup is not one that I would recommend unless you're at a place in your health that you feel comfortable with maintaining, but it is a traditional food, right? We have been uh, getting the, the syrup from the maple trees for a long time in traditional cultures. Um, but again, certain times of year, right? This is not a food that mo that traditional cultures were eating all year round. It was like a treat that happened, you know, for a short period of time once a year. Uh, so again, if you are uh, good about where you are in your health, you're in remission from your symptoms, you've done a lot of healing, your metabolism's pretty healthy, your gut's pretty healthy, this can be a good natural sugar to indulge in on occasionally. Um, so the next one I want to talk about is honey. Uh, ideally, we want raw honey because this would be the pros of honey is that there are actually some really nice minerals and enzymes and probiotics in honey. Uh, and so there actually are some health benefits to honey. It actually does not feed uh, bacterial overgrowth, which is really, really cool, which is why uh, it is safe to introduce fairly early on in a gut reset protocol. However, it can feed fungus. It can feed yeast. And so if uh, yeast overgrowth is one of your primary issues, it's something to be a little cautious around, um, but it will not feed bacterial overgrowth. So that's really, really cool. Uh, and uh, it uh, has a very wonderfully naturally sweet flavor. Um, it will disrupt blood sugar level, uh, blood sugar balance for some people who have a compromised metabolism. So uh, if you are still working on your um, your insulin sensitivity, is something I would uh, not do or do very minimally, like a teaspoon a day. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it does have a lot of those, uh, other benefits. Like it is considered a medicinal food, um, uh, by some traditional societies. Um, but again, those societies were eating it during honey season and not other times of year. So, uh, a lot of a better option in my opinion than some of the other ones I have discussed because it does have those benefits. It does not feed bacterial overgrowth but there are still some cautions around it still can be disruptive to blood sugar and it still can feed yeast overgrowth. So now we're getting into more of the alternatives. So there are modern artificial sweeteners that are very dangerous and damaging, right? There's been a lot of studies on some of these uh, chemical uh, artificial sweeteners on how damaging they are. Uh, they really are toxins, um, and so they can be damaging to the liver, uh, and uh, we definitely don't want to do any of those. But there are a lot of these kinds of uh, natural alternatives uh, on the market now, especially since ketogenic uh, and low-carbohydrate diets have gained popularity. Um, and some of these are these sugar alcohols, right? These things like erythritol and xylitol and... Um, allulose, things like that. And as far as I can tell, these don't generally feed bacterial overgrowth. Um, so uh, they are sometimes used by people who are trying to do a gut reset. Um, but they are not traditional foods either, right? They're very recent inventions. And um, we don't really know how they affect us in the long term. Right, and I just tend to be skeptical of things that were invented in the last couple hundred years, right? Because we just don't know. And to me, there's a reason why nature didn't come up with this on their own. Uh, and even, even so, like, even if we discover that they're probably safe, which a lot of them look like they probably are, but um, our bodies don't necessarily know how to cope with them from an evolutionary perspective, right? And I'm really into the idea of really thinking about how our cells respond to things from an evolutionary perspective. But if our cells are encountering something, a substance that never existed until a couple hundred years ago or the last hundred years, um, Again, I'm just as skeptical about what that is doing to the body. And personally, I wouldn't risk it, especially if you're in the midst of healing, you know, really significant chronic illness. Um, it would just not worth it to me. So I don't recommend them to my clients. Um, if it's something you want to indulge in once in a while in a treat, you know, for a special thing you're making for a holiday or a treat or something, it's certainly not the end of the world. But again, not something I would generally recommend. Uh, there are some other more natural alternatives that I'll talk about in a moment.
Um, I feel similarly about monk fruit, uh, even though it's an extract of a whole food, um, it was not used, you know, traditionally, and it takes this extractive process to um, uh, produce it, and I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of it. <laughs> okay, uh, so some of the more natural options that are also going to be a little um, gentler on uh, the blood sugar, or won't affect blood sugar at all, and also will not feed bacterial overgrowth, are going to be the chicory root, the inulin, and stevia. Uh, so chicory root or inulin, uh, that is a traditional food. Chicory root um, has been used as a natural sweetener by traditional societies, and there's a lot of health benefits to it. It's very, very high in soluble fiber, which actually can bind to toxins uh, and help you detoxify uh, the bowels. So it uh, is a natural sweetener that does not actually have uh, any sugar in it, so it will not disrupt the blood sugar and it will not feed uh, bacterial overgrowth. Now that being said, there are some bacteria that can feed on the soluble fiber, and so if you have very, very serious gut dysbiosis, um, I wouldn't start out with this. I would wait until you've done some level of gut repair, but it can be brought in a lot sooner than like true sugars and starches and things like that. So uh, maybe wait, you know, at least four weeks or so into resetting the gut until you get, you know, the the worst <laughs> of the overgrowth purged out. Um, but then you can uh, bring that in. And it's a really, really lovely alternative that, like I said, has these also detoxifying health benefits to it. Uh, and stevia is the one that I allow even for uh, my clients that are the most compromised because it is an herb, uh, so it doesn't have any uh, sugar actually in it. It's just a sweet-flavored herb, uh, and it is used in traditional societies. It's used as a, a sweetener uh, in, in traditional contexts, and uh, it does not disrupt blood sugar. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really have any downsides that I have seen. Uh, now, there are some people who it seems to upset their stomach. Uh, they seem to get a little irritated uh, digestively by it when they're first starting out, but these tend to be people that are dealing with pretty significant health issues. It's, it's more unusual in my experience, but it can happen, so it's something to be aware of. Um, you also have to be careful because, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the stevia you can buy in the U.S. Uh, has things like dextrose and other sugars added to it because uh, the sweet flavor is very distinct. Uh, it doesn't quite taste like the sugar sweet flavor. It's kind of a distinct sweet flavor. And so a lot of times things are added to it to um, kind of shift that flavor to be something that Americans are a little more used to. And so you have to be really careful about the product that you buy, but if you just get pure stevia, uh, it's a great alternative that you can use even in the first stages of resetting the microbiome and healing your metabolism. Now, there are some pros and cons to just keeping the sweet flavor in your diet at all. Some people who have had a really intensive sweet addiction uh, actually need to reset their palate, and I recommend that they take the sweet flavor out of their diet entirely for at least a couple of months just to reset the palate and then they can bring it back in uh, with some of these uh, sweetener alternatives. Um, other people are not gonna do well with that. They're actually gonna be more compliant if they have some kind of alternative sweetener from the beginning of their transition, and in that case, you know, you can think about all the different pros and cons I list listed and decide uh, which one is gonna work for you as an alternative, depending on where you are in your journey. Um, I actually took out all sweet flavors uh, for over a year because I had such an addiction to the sweet flavor. I felt like it was really important to myself to completely reset my palate. Uh, and now I eat sweet foods very often and I don't have the same addiction or craving that I did in the past. Um, so that was my personal choice, but that doesn't work for everyone. So I hope this was helpful in talking through uh, why we want to be mindful of uh, sugars in our diet, even natural ones, and uh, the pros and cons of your different options. Let me know if you have any questions.